Within the whole field of cognitive neuroscience, there have been some key observations that have shaped a whole field. The, arguably the most important, certainly the most dominant, has, was the discovery in relation to a patient called HM. HM suffered with temporal lobe epilepsy. It was intractable and the only way that his seizures could be managed was to do a procedure that would remove the part of the brain that was generating these seizures. That happened to be the hippocampus. So he had his hippocampus removed. This was in the late 50s. Following the operation, what was observed was that he was perfectly normal. He could do everything he could do before. But more careful observation identified the fact that he was no longer encoding ongoing experience. So he was no longer laying down new memories of what was happening to him. A simple example would be if HM was seen six months after the operation and he was asked, you know, what's he been doing for the last six months, he would not have a clue. If you told him something and left the room and came back and said, by the way, what did I just mention to you? He would not remember. But he would remember something for a period of one minute, approximately. So his experience was tied down to a one minute here and now experience. However, he could still cook, he could still operate within a familiar environment because he had retained the implicit memory skills that he had acquired prior to the experience of the operation. So he hi this case highlighted that there was a fractionation of memory. It could be divided into explicit, implicit, uh, episodic, uh, semantic. So things he had learned, facts he would learned in the past, he retained but new facts and new experiences were no longer retained. HM died very recently. If he was interviewed in the year before he died and asked about who was the President of the United States, he would answer Eisenhower. He still believed that TVs were black and white, even though he'd been exposed to color TVs all his life. But he made an enormous contribution because of allowing himself to be studied and he provided some of the key insights that we have in cognitive neuroscience and our understanding of memory has been greatly enriched by the tragedy that surrounded his life and the operation he had.